Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Matthew chapter 17, verses 14. If you're there, you say, Amen. In a deep voice, say, Amen. Bible says from verses 14, and when they were come, the multitudes, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic, sore, vexed, for oft time times, or oft times he falleth into the fire, and often in the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. The Bible says. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil. He departed out of him and the child was cured that very hour. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then the disciples of Jesus said unto him, Why could we not cast him out? Why could we not cast the devil out? Why couldn't we cast this devil out? Somebody shout hallelujah. And the Bible says, and Jesus said, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing. The Bible says nothing shall be impossible with you. Somebody say, nothing is impossible with me. Say, nothing is impossible with me. Now get it from here. Put it here. Say, nothing is impossible with me. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now let me explain this in context. We've been recently on a sermon series of faith. How many of you know that? We've been preaching about faith. For the past couple of Thursdays and Sundays, I have labored to speak on the spirit of faith, the mystery of faith, the person of faith, the application of faith, the understanding of faith, the life of faith, the life of a believer. Praise God. And the Lord spoke to us that as we are in a season of stretching forth, it was expedient that we teach vehemently The mind of faith. Somebody shout hallelujah. Even tonight something wonderful is going to come in your spirit. It's going to cause you to believe God another way. Somebody shout hallelujah. To believe God in another realm. To believe God in another understanding. To believe God with another mind. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say amen. Now, the story begins when a man has a lunatic child. This boy was vexed by devils. Spirits used to torment him every hour. And oftentimes the devils used to throw the young man in fire. And so Jesus comes. And the man comes to Jesus and says, Please help me and heal my son. The question is, the disciples had done something before. Before the man goes to Jesus, the disciples had tried to rebuke the devil out of the little boy. And then they cast out, they prayed, they they did everything that you know how. Unfortunately, like the scripture tells us, they were not able to cast out the devil. I'm talking of that person who has tried to deal with a demon for years. You've tried to address a situation for years. You've tried to address a health situation for years. You've tried to address a financial situation for years. You've tried to to address a relational situation for years. 
You've tried to address a career situation for years. You've tried to address a ministry situation for years. You have applied yourself to the deliverance of the word of God and prayed and believed and spoken to this thing. But alas, it's not going. I have good news for you. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's not, you're not the first one. The Bible tells us that the disciples, the followers of our Lord and Savior Jesus, tried to cast out a devil or out of a child and failed. And then they come to him and tell him, how come we could not cast out these devils? Praise the Lord Jesus. And Jesus told them, because of your unbelief. I want the NIV in the verse 20. I need to touch something very special. He replied, because you have so little faith. Did you hear that? He told them, because you have so little faith. And he told them, but if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move and nothing will be possible for you. Hello? Think with me. You have little faith. That is why results are not working in your life. Okay, we understand. I'm, tra I'm struggling with little faith. And then you tell me, but if your faith is as small as a mustard seed. Did you hear that? You, you have little faith. But if your faith is as small as a mustard seed. He says, you shall speak to this mountain, be removed here and be thrown to yonder place, and nothing shall be impossible with you. Little faith, small mustard seed. Faith as small as a mustard seed. You're telling me I have little faith, but again, if I have faith as small as a mustard seed, I'll speak to the mountain and it shall be removed. Who is following what I'm saying? Because almost as though little and small look the same. Somebody shout hallelujah. Almost as though little and small appear to be similar. But I have news for you. These two are different. Little faith is different from small faith. I'm going to explain to, that, to you that. Little faith is different from small faith. Somebody shout hallelujah. When we read from the mind of the spirit, okay? The, the mind of the spirit. God's definite intention to reveal the mystery of faith and how it operates in our dispensation or times. We have to go firstly to not how you interpret it from your grammar and English, from your semantic, to how God interprets it and sees it from his mind. And understanding. Are you following what I'm saying? There is a mind God had when he was communicating this particular scripture. It's not the first time in the Bible before as they talk about mustard seeds. At one point he says that the kingdom of God is likened unto a man that planted a what? A mustard seed in his, in his field. He has used the examples of mustard seed before. But in here he wants you and I to to grasp a classical concept of faith. To grasp a classical concept of faith. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is why I love the way the KJV renders it. The KJV, from what we're reading, he says, and if you have faith, he says, for verily I say unto you, if your faith, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, as a grain of a mustard seed, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, if you have faith as a grain, as a grain, or like a grain of mustard seed, that means he's not talking about how big or small. He's talking about the nature of a mustard seed. Somebody shout hallelujah. He's talking about the nature of a mustard seed. What is the nature of a mustard seed? How does a mustard seed work? How does it respond? How does it react? What are the, what is the nature? What, what are the traits of a mustard seed? Because if you understand it, 
He's trying to give you something way bigger than many of you can imagine. Let's go a bit deeper. For those of you who are readers, you will research and realize that there are different kinds of mustards. There are different kinds of mustard plants in the world. Are you following me? There are different kinds of mustard plants in the world. Different kinds. But I have taken time to study the kinds of mustards in Jesus' time. That in some parts up to today still grow around Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, in the deserts, all that area of Israel. Because if Jesus is talking about a mustard, he must be talking about the kind of mustard that they could relate with. Not the kind of mustard that you understand some of you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there's different kinds of mustards. And now, any biological person would agree if you do your research that these kind of mustards that are grown in those areas, some are called toothbrush trees, some are called uh, something like a sunapis something, sunapis nigra or the black mustard or something like that. They carry names of sort. And these trees or seeds have a certain characteristic. So let me call them plants. These mustards have particular characteristics. One, those kinds of mustards can grow in any kind of ground. I want you to note this. Whether you're talking of sandy, whether you're talking of good ground, whether, it doesn't matter whether it's, it's deserted and dry ground. They grow in any kind of ground. And those kinds of mustards also grow in any kind of climate. Whether it's hot, whether it's cold, whether it's dry, whether it's arid, whatever it is, they grow. And the uniqueness of these, even if you get two different seeds and put them in the same place, the mustard will grow differently from the other. They grow so fast and unexplainable. And they can grow up to about 20 feet high and 20 feet wide. Depending on how long they are left to grow. These are things that even if you pluck from the trunk, they'll grow again. That's the character of the mustard seed. So Jesus is not just telling you about small or big. No, he's telling you firstly, the nature of this tree that grows 20 feet big, grows very fast, can grow under any elements, can grow under any weather, can be planted in sandy, clay, soil, whatever you want. It can grow under any circumstance. But when it enters, it looks so small that it doesn't seem like it will survive. Mama, I don't know who I'm preaching to. You know, a real mustard seed is about one millimeter or two. It's very small little things. Those of you who have seen them, you know what I'm talking about. And that represents our insufficiency. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says that the sufficiency is not of us as of to think of anything by us, of ourselves. But it says, but the sufficiency is of God who has made us able ministers of the covenant. That means that our planting, our, our physical outlook, what men see will always appear smaller, ineffective, and unable compared to what we can produce. I don't know who I'm talking to. Somebody shout hallelujah. I say that what is upon your life has no bearing with what is going to come out or what can come out. So Jesus looks at how a mustard tree appears. How fast it grows. How high it can grow. And the Bible says, and the fowls of the air come. And they make a nest over it. They sit under it. That means that the, this, it, it, it gets to a point where it starts to harbor lives. It, start, it gets to the overflow where it starts to benefit. Somebody shout hallelujah. Paul says, I, 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 I have come to the end of my life. And now I'm, like a, I'm, I'm, I'm poured out like an offering. 
I, I'm poured out. When, oh, I'm, I'm talking of the fullness that filleth all things. That fullness filling you by the knowledge of God. Soon I'm preaching a sermon on that. On the knowledge of God. Because the Bible says, they that know their God. They that know their God. They that know their God. Paul got to a point where he was so full of the spirit that he was in the overflow. And he was like an offering being poured out. That means if he was a cup, God poured until it got so full. Are you hearing me? That everybody under him, the saucer, everybody under him had no way not to benefit, not to receive from that life. It was not the, the deliberate effort to pour out. No. Are you hearing me? He says, I'm poured out. I am poured out. I don't pour myself out. I am poured out. There's no effort in me having effect anymore. It's almost as though I don't have a choice. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Who has understood what I just said? You get to a place where you don't release effort to release the life of the spirit. No. It's effortless. Because you're poured out as an offering. Every time you stand before people, you have some to offer. And it's out of your abundance. Hallelujah. There is no form of strife or struggle whatsoever. Because you're poured out. Somebody say, I am full of God. Are you following me? Because I'm about to go deep. But I had to begin from the surface. So that I don't lose anybody here. Are you following what I'm saying? That is why every one of us must know personally the love of God. The love of God must be a revelation in your spirit. It is not something you should hear about. No. You have to be deeply rooted and grounded in love. You, you must be dif- deeply rooted and grounded in love. He says that you might, you might experience the love of God you, beyond just knowledge. You know, they, some, some people know God loves them because the Bible tells them so. <laughs> yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. They believe so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Why? For the Bible tells me so. Which is okay. But you have to get to a point. Paul says that you may really come to know practically and through experience for yourselves the love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. God has to tickle you and you love. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. God has to minister to you. Beyond men can articulate. There are people here who are longing to be loved. They are looking for love in the wrong places. Uh Uh-uh. Put up your hands and say, God, love me. By experience. Yes. He says, listen, because he says, you see, when you know this love that supposes mere knowledge without experience, the Amplified says that you may, listen, be filled through all your being and to all the fullness of God. Did you understand that? When you experience the love of God, you are filled in all your being, the fullness of God. And he says that you may have, listen, the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. What a life. Tell your neighbor, what a life. Imagine you're filled. You're flooded from head to toe. Everything about you is God. And he says the mystery here is love. The love of God. 
I know how much God loves me. I know how much God loves me. That is why it says perfect love casteth out all fear. I know how much God loves me. Tell, tell it to yourself. Convince yourself, okay. I know how much God loves me. He loves me. He loves me. He loves you. So much. But you see, you have to experience it. You have to experience it. You have to, it has to go beyond I know. It has to be felt. He has to flood you until you, somebody receive it. Somebody shout hallelujah. When we go back to the mind of what God is defining as this seed, he's trying to tell you and I that you have to get to the level. Remember Luke eight eleven says that the parable is that the seed is the word of God. How many of you know that? The parable, the secret, the mystery is that the seed is the word of God. Are you following me? Now we go a bit deeper here and I want to show you something. God wants to, he wants you to be like a mustard seed. He wants you to get to a point where under any weather, any elements, any circumstances, any pressure, any words, any ground, hot or cold, dark or white, Sandy or clay, black or yellow, stony or what? That at any one point, nothing hinders your progress. Nothing. Who has understood what I just said? Nothing holds back your miracle. Nothing holds back your breakthrough. Nothing holds back your deli- Nothing. You see, there are people who have faith because everything is going on okay. There are people who have faith because everything is working fine. You're even excited, not because God is revealed, no, but you are excited because everything is perfect. Then circumstances come. Situations come. Issues hit you left, right, and center. And you start asking yourself, but God, am I born again? Do you love me? Did you die for my sins? Am I in the right thing? Did you call me? Did you ordain me? Are you in it? Am I in it? You always understood what I just said. So the smallness of this mustard seed was not in the size. It was in the unexpected results it could produce under any circumstance. You have to get to a level where you can't say, you see, I would have been successful, but I would have been a blessing, but I would have grown, but you see, I, something, I knew the breakthrough was there, but there was a, the economy was, the financial status was, The words of men were, the the situations at my workplace were not favorable. My husband wasn't helpful. Ah! Auntie, I'm starting to preach. You have to get to the level. Whether it's hot or cold. Whether it's summer or winter. Whether it's black or brown. Whether it's air. Whether it's arid or semi-arid. Whether it's stony or clay. Whether it's sunny or black. Whether it's blue or pink. Whether it's big or small. Whether it's up or down. Whether it's... Nothing shakes you. Now that is faith. Oh, I I have divine health. I have divine health. Then a person goes to the doctor. Doctor tells him, you have two weeks to live. What? What? (laughs) Tell you about those are just statistics. (laughs) 
<laughs> Who has understood what I just said? No. The doctor says this is happening. He says, ah, 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 ah. There's a doctor above doctors. There's a healer above healers. There's a power above powers. There's a life above life. That's called faith. Nothing is going to stop you from being a success in this world. If they fire you, that's okay. God will get you another job. If they chuck you, that's okay. God will get you another person. If they walk away, let them not stand in the way. To st- they cause traffic. God will bring another one. It- Somebody said hallelujah. If they don't love you, that's okay. God will send a lover. You understand? If they don't understand you, that's all right. God will send people who understand you. If they work with you, fine. If they don't work with you, mustard, baby. Mustard. Whether in the desert you'll blossom, whether in the hottest areas you'll grow, it will be said of you that you see in that area, nothing grows. But not only has she grown, she has grown faster. In that place, nothing moves. But not only has he moved, but he has moved way faster than others can move. I prophesy upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus that neither hell nor sky, no up, no down, nothing is going to hold you back from the blessing of God upon your life. Why? Before... He spoke it. He knew. Nothing can catch you by surprise. You've got this figured out. You understand what I'm saying? Nothing in your life surprises God. Oh, what? You have cancer. Oh, God. You're so faint with you. Jesus and the angels, they say, Paul... Peter has cast, let's faint. Oh, no. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Nothing stops the clock of heaven. Nothing can hold back your blessing. Nothing. You have to get to a level. Listen, you have to get to a level. Where nothing changes your faith in the word of God. If the Bible says by his stripes you are healed. But now if, even if you go to the doctor and they tell you your disease had advanced. <laughs> tell somebody I'm a wild mustard. You have to get to a level where you're wild. You get on the account and there is no money. And you say, but uh uh-uh. It is there. Where But that's okay. The gospel is foolishness. To them that perish. But unto us. Unto us. Saints, unto us. What is the gospel? The power of God. The power of God. The power of God. Let the worst news come. And take your tea. That's mustard baby. Let the worst criticism come. And you get your tea. That's mustard. You you can't kill a dead man. (laughs) You can't. How do you kill a dead man?
Did you understand what I just said? Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God and to salvation. To the Jew first and to the Greek. To the one that seeks the sign because the Jew seeks after a sign and the Greek after wisdom. That's why he's Christ, both the wisdom and the power of God. We both have the power and the wisdom. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say to yourself, I will not fail. Say again, I will not fail. I will not fail. I'm of the mustard kind. I'm of the mustard kind. Plant me anywhere. The Bible speaks of Jesus one time. The Bible says he secluded himself in a far place and men followed him. This, this God. Why? Because what is upon your life is not subject to the elements of this world. You are above conquer. You are more than conquerors through Christ which strengthens you. But God is looking for someone who can get to a level where when the word of God says that you are rich, regardless of what you see in your pocket, for another day you will never doubt that you are. Oh, I've confessed that I'm rich. I've confessed that I'm blessed. I've confessed all these kind of things, apostle. But you see now I've gotten to a point, but, but nothing is yet happening. Of what seed are you? Nothing is yet happening. Are you sick or more? Well, what are you? Who am I talking to? Even if I woke up in the morning and I checked this pocket and there was nothing. And then I checked the other one and there was nothing. I would still believe. Nothing takes away my faith in God. No situation should change your confession and your state of heart. You can decide to be rich forever from today. Whether your pockets have money or they don't. You can decide to be rich. You can decide to be healthy from today. Whether the doctor said... But apostle, what if I, how, how? But what if I believe and then I, how? He said, and nothing shall be impossible with you. Nothing shall be impossible with you. Nothing. Come on, dream big. Tell your neighbor, dream big. Dream, dream big, dream big, dream big. Let me tell you why. Let, let me tell you why many, of our, many Christians struggle in the walk of this faith. See, it's one thing to say we observe lying vanities. It's one thing to say, you know, it's hard to believe when the, the ground is sandy or it's clay or it's hard or, or the weather is not good or, or it's cold or it's winter, it's summer, it's hot, it's dry, it's all right. No, no, no. But you see, what is the real problem? The real problem is we do not know how God works. When the mind of God is revealed to you, you don't worry about how results come. I'll give you an example. In 1 Kings chapter 17, the Bible tells us in verse 8, the word of the Lord came. You remember that time? The word of the Lord came in 1 Kings 17:8. It came to who? Okay, maybe you'll figure when I read. It came to him saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I've commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. Who was that? Elijah. The brook had dried. The source had dried. The place where he had expected from had dried. 
The, the thing which he was looking to for his finances, the thing which he was looking to for his favor, the thing she was looking to for her breakthrough, the man, the man, the, the, the man, the, the man she always counted on for her rent. The, <laughs> the sponsor he, he counted on for fees. The, the friend she, she expected airtime from the Cousin brother, he, he was expecting a hollow from the friend who he always leaned on for help. The and the brook is dried. Ladies and gentlemen, the book, the brook dried. And Elijah is contemplating, he's saying, why, why will I eat? So God comes to Elijah and tells him, look. Go to Zarephath, not the other one of the north, the one that belongs to Zidon. There is a widow there. I have commanded her to sustain you. I have commanded. Now, see how God thinks. Next slide. Now, he arose and went to Zarephath. And then he came to the gate of the city with the expectation that God has already spoken to the widow. Because he has commanded. <laughs> now, the Bible says, he came to the gate of the city. And says, behold, a widow woman was there gathering sticks. He called her and said, fetch me. This, this was a man with expectation. <laughs> fetch me what? I know God has already spoken to you. Fetch me water in a vessel that I may drink. And the next verse says, and as she was going to fetch, she called, hey, come back. Go get me a morsel of bread also in your hands. Because I'm sure you're the woman God has what? Commanded. And the next verse says, she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks. That I may go in and dress it for me and my son. That we may eat and die. That means, dude. <laughs> Woo! Somebody shout glory. Imagine what entered Elijah's head, the prophet. If Elijah was like the people of 2018. Elijah would have said, God, I think I, uh, there was a short circuit in the short wave. <laughs> Maybe this is not the widow. Because the one I'm looking for, you commanded. Th this is not the one. Th this must not be the job. You, you told me I will lend to nations. And then your paycheck was 200,000. <laughs> God, you told me that my marriage would be good. But what is happening? I think I married the wrong man. God, I think I married the wrong man. This is not your will. You told me. Do you understand what I'm saying? No. Even as he told us, I will use you. And he said, like, no, no. <laughs> Then things happen, and you're like, no, come up. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> where, 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 where are you? <laughs> you? You told me I'll be with you. But I don't feel you. Are you hearing me? I'll not put you to shame. And I'm, oh. And I'm like a lamb on, on slaughter. But you told me that you'll not put me to shame. No, 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 no. Elijah, listen. I don't know where you're coming from or who you are. Water is accessible. I was going to give you water. But if you're talking of food, eh? I have two sticks. The bread I have eh, is to beg for me and my son so we die. So, where are you in the equation? But I love the man of God. I love the man of God. 
Listen. Elijah is the one now telling the woman who's going to die. Ah, fear not. Meaning I know, I know, I know who I am. You, you don't need to have it for, for you to feed me. No. That I, the fact that I came. Who has understood what I just said? The fact that a man of God has come. The fact that I am a man of God. Fear not. Imagine you enter a company and God told you you're a multimillionaire in dollars. You enter a company and you see, um, we might not be able to give you the month's salary because we're a bit down with cash. Then you tell your boss, uh uh-uh. Fear not. This is a multi-million dollar business. Come on, I'm looking for some wild people. <laughs> you know, there's nothing in medicine we can do for you. Then, uh-uh, fear not, doctor. Fear, fear not, doctor. Don't, don't even be afraid. Don't, don't, don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. Uh-uh. I, I know how to f- fix it. I know how. In fact, if you get more people with those problems, send them to me. Setelebakoya. Brozika manto sika salabaya. Who has understood what I just said? <laughs> Our projection is what the future shows us before we even see it. And that's what gives us the confidence to stand. He says, I had fainted if I had not believed to see. He, he, didn't, he didn't faint because he had seen. No. What he had in the equation here was to believe to see. And a man refuses to die. He says, I had fainted if I had not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That hope that tells you it doesn't matter how I believe to see. Yes, it has taken three, two years. But I believe to see. Such a person doesn't faint when small bad news come. Mm-mm. No. No, no, no. We don't fall into issues and we say, no, I wasn't ready. No. We are ready for anything. Tell your neighbor, I am ready for anything. Let it come. Tomorrow, let it come. Let it come. Mustard. You understand what I'm saying? Mustard. Let it come. Tell your neighbor, let it come. Let the worst of it come. Mustard. Hard. They look at you, you don't even smell the smoke. Yet you are in the middle of the fire. Why? Because you know how God thinks. When God sends you to a thing, even if it doesn't look like it has what, it doesn't have what you need, the fact that he has sent you there, there is grace for you to cause it to have what you need. Oh! That is why our Lord curses a tree. People say, but that's not fair. No, he walked to a tree. He was hungry one time. He went to a tree. He looked at it. And the Bible says, and finding no figs for, for he says, because it was not the time, he, but God, the timing. You are the one who created this tree. You're the one who knew that it was not time for it to have figs because you're the God who created it. But the the, the God I'm talking about still comes to that tree. Expecting that by the time he reaches there, fruit will appear. Woo! (laughs) Look at you. Did you understand what I just said? A 
And the Bible says, seeing a fig tree from afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he might find the bite, he might find anything thereof. And when he came to eat, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of the figs was not yet. And the Bible says, and Jesus answered. He gave it an answer. That means that tree refused. <laughs> I don't know whether somebody's a bit. That means that tree refused. It refused. It refused. He says, uh-uh, it's not the time. The son of man said no. No man shall eat fruit thereof after. And his disciples heard it. What happened? The tree died. The tree died. The tree died. Hey, but Jesus, is it fair to curse a tree whose season and time it wasn't for it to produce fig tree leaves? Sort yourself out. The son of God was hungry. <laughs> this man is telling people that you can have everything you want when you want it. Even better. My God shall supply <laughs> your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. But sometimes also they are even better. Whatsoever you ask when you pray. But it might not be the time. Listen. Whatsoever. But some people might use, misuse it. No, no, no. We're not talking about incorruptible seed. Begotten people. You see, you must first understand the nature the regenerated nature of the new creation before you indulge in judging its liberties. Before you indulge in judging the liberties of the new creation nature, you must first understand its nature, its regenerated nature in Christ. Whereof it's born of the incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. You understand? You must know that the, the, the law of liberty works with the nature of this creation, this new creature. If any man be in Christ, is a new creation. The church of Jesus, and I believe we are going there every day, but it's coming to the fullest understanding of what it means to be free. For who saw the sun sets free? It's free indeed. He says, for whosoever looketh into the law of liberty, not being a forgetful hearer. He, he passes that, but a doer of the work. He says, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. He shall be blessed in his deeds. Because he's not a forgetful hearer. You, you don't forget who you are because of what has happened to you. No, regardless of what has happened, I, I still know I am Apostle Grace Luenga, Son of the Most High. Even if I woke up and I had one member, it's already too late now. But even in the example, it has failed. You understand? It has failed. Even in the example, I failed to construct the English. Because it's not possible. Tell your neighbor, I can't be poor. I can't fail. I can't lack. I can't regress. My marriage can't fail. My ministry can't fail. My job can't fail. My understanding won't fail. My health won't fail. It will not. It cannot. It does not. I'm trying to build your faith to a level where you just say, I send. You tell devil, as devil, send. I'm ready. It hits you and bounces back and goes back and tells them, Oli Mulala. The other one is another. Somebody shout hallelujah. For this cause we faint not. Paul says. For this cause we faint not. He says, for all things are for your sex. Banange. He says, for all things are for your sake. But I don't understand this. 
understand it. It is for your sake that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. And what does the next verse say? For which cause we faint not. That's the only reason why you still come to pray. Even when things have not changed in your house. That is the very reason why you still raise your hands to Jehovah God. Even when your marriage is not yet fixed. That is the very reason why you still worship the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Even when your health has not been full. Why? Because it's only a matter of time. Things will change. That's why he says I had fainted. He says I had fainted if I had not believed. Do you know why we don't give up? When somebody says, you know what, I suppose I'm tired. You, you're fainting. He says, if, if you, he, he says if you faint in your day of adversity, he says your strength is small. If you faint, if thou faint, he says, in your day of adversity, your strength is small. The message Bible says that if, if, give me the message. He says, if you fall, listen, to pieces in a crisis, he says, there was nothing much to you in the first place. You were acting. You're not really born again. You're playing church. There was nothing to you in the first place. God has not created a mind for you to faint in crisis. He hasn't put us in this world to go through somber mood of crisis. He hasn't said that crisis won't come. He has only said, fix your eyes on things above. Fix your eyes on things above. That's why he says, I had fainted. If I had not believed to see the goodness of the I had, I had. That means there are things that can push you to say, but God, they're here. Uh, and God says, no, see where you're going. That's why the next verse says, in, again, Psalms 14, the verse 14. He's, next verse, next verse, next verse. He says, wait on the Lord. And he says, be of good courage while you're waiting and he shall strengthen your heart he says wait I say on the Lord let me explain the Hebrew definition of waiting on the Lord the Hebrew definition of waiting on the Lord is not just the patient looking upward of when are you coming or like the slaves of oh, kumbaya my Lord come by here no 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 waiting on the Lord from the Hebrew understanding is to allow to step back to let God go ahead of you that's what he means. That's what it means to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord means you don't go in your own mind. No. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall what? Direct your path. Who has understood what I just said? He means to tell you that waiting on him means you put him before you. What does the Bible say? For the Lord was before me always. He was before me always. In everything, whatever happens in your life, God, God, your end is of the Lord. Somebody said hallelujah. It's of the Lord. He says, for I've set the Lord always before me. I have set the Lord always before me. He says, because he is at my right hand and I shall not be moved. That's, that's why we wait. It means every time you look unto him, the author and the finisher of your face. That is why he says in Psalms, wait on the Lord. Be of good cheer. Be of good courage. I will strengthen your heart. Give me the message of that. The message, the message version of verse 14 says, he says, stay hey, with God. Take heart, don't quit. I'll say it again. Stay with God. Things might not work the way. Yes. Stay with God. Wake up in the morning with a conscience that Jehovah God is near me. Let me tell you. I feel God now than I've ever felt him. 
saints, I'm not lying. I bear witness before the Holy Spirit that I feel God now than I've ever felt Him in my life. For me, that's the most important thing. I have God. Tell your neighbor, I have God. He promised us that in Isaiah chapter 9, uh, chapter 9, verse 6, he says, unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. Hey, 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 children are born, sons are gifts. So from Nepios to sonship, you'll get it. He says, and the government, the Bible says, shall be unto his shoulder, and his name shall be wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. And the next verse says, of, now this thing sobered me, this is for you who wonder, how are my next 10 years? Where am I going in the next five years? God, next year, what do you have for me? What do you have for me in the next 30 years? Let me answer you. He says, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Did you hear what I just said? Did you understand what I just said? He says, as long as you're stayed in God, your finances will never run out. As long as you're stayed in God, the anointing on your life will never run out. As long as you're stayed in God, the ministry will never die. As long as his government, he says, concerning his government and the increase of his government and the peace thereof, he said, there shall be no end. Some people say, you know, one time some guy told me, I told you, you know, apostle, do everything now while you still have the people. Uh-huh. You see, Pastor Gundi, their ministry died. Even Pastor Gundi, their ministry died. Even the other pastor, Pastor, there was one time big, but now they also went small. Now even you, you have to prepare. I looked at the guy, and I realized we were reading a different Bible. The God he was talking about was not the God of Apostle Grace Rubega, but of the son of Paulo. No! Your God said that of the increase of his government and peace, he says, there shall be no end. What does that mean? Do I have a witness? That's why my prayer is also in consonance to the word. You understand? I tell Rachel, let's add a hundred chairs. Thank you, Lord. Sharababa, Zikoto, Zarababa. Because you said, because you said, because you said of the increase of your government and the peace thereof, you said there shall be no end. And he says, upon uh, on the throne, uh, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it. Listen, that means he, he orders my steps and he establishes it with judgment and justice from henceforth, even forever. And he says. And the seal of the Lord shall perform this. What am I saying? God has a chisel to succeed for your sake. God has a chisel to keep you healthy. He has, he, let me even say it with one eye closed. He has a chisel. Slap somebody and tell them the zeal of the Lord is performing. The zeal of the Lord is performing in your marriage. The zeal of the Lord is performing in your health. The zeal of the Lord is performing in your business. The zeal of the Lord is performing, performing on your ministry. The zeal of the Lord is performing on your vision. It's performing in your education. It's performing in your career. It's performing in every aspect of your life. Mustard, baby. Mustard. Hallelujah, somebody. Get to your feet. You're going to pray like mustard. Tell your neighbor, we are going to pray like mustard. I'm going to give you two minutes of crazy prayer. Two. Two. Come on, somebody speak to God. All for me, all for me, all for me.
things are turning around for me. But, but if it wakes up tomorrow and it's worse, it doesn't change the seed. It doesn't change the word of God. It doesn't. All for me. All for me. All for me. Things are turning around for me. Come on, speak to God. All for me. All for me. All for me. Things are turning around. Come on, speak of those things that be not as though they are. Come on. Come on. Come on. Master. Master. Whether it's dry, it's sandy, it's clay, it's hot, it's cold, it's winter, nothing changes its nature. Whether it's small, nothing changes its nature. Come on! Come on, somebody. One more minute. somebody here you know sometimes it's a very confusing state when you have believed God for so long you have tried to cast out a devil for so long you have tried to deal with something in your marriage or your family or your ministry and it just doesn't seem to go there is an anointing right now I say there is an anointing right now that is breaking old stories, old addictions, old afflictions. You've been living with a disease for more than 12, 30, 15 years. It has failed. Power goes. You know, there, there's somebody of, and, and I want to address the spirit of poverty. Somebody has been struggling greatly with a spirit of poverty. It has frustrated. I know who I'm talking to. Holy Ghost! Deliver that person. Deliver them. There are people here who feel like yes, you pray. Yes, you believe. Yes, you, you do these things. But there seems like there's a calimitation on you. It, it's not direct but it can be seen in your life you feel like there's a limitation you just don't seem to go beyond a certain boundary the grace to cause you to go is here Holy Spirit let him receive it right now let her receive it right now in the mighty name of Jesus somebody say in the name of Jesus 
Say in the name of Jesus. I'm mastered. Say in the name of Jesus. I'm a success. Say in the name of Jesus. Boundaries are not there. Limitations are not there. The words of men won't fail. I mean they, they will fail. Say the words of men will fail. If they are not in my favor. Say I'm a success. Going in and going out. The truth of God. Upon my life. Will always prevail. Above the deception. Of the enemy. It doesn't matter how bad. It doesn't matter how ugly. It doesn't matter how fake. My God still reigns. In the kingdom of men. He's still the ruler. Of heaven and earth. I decree. In the mighty name of Jesus. In a few days. In a few weeks. I'm better. I'm better. Give the Lord a mighty and of praise. Come on clap for Jesus. Listen. When you understand this. It doesn't matter what you wake up to. Or what wakes you up. All that matters is who you have. And brethren, we have made it. Tell your neighbor, we have made it. If you're sick in your body, receive healing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. If somebody came with wounds in your throat, God is healing you. Sinuses is healing. Chest pain is healing. Heart disease is healing. Arthritis is healing. Receive your healing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you're here and you have never received Jesus, as, after hearing today's someone, you said, but I think I need to enter this covenant. I have good news for you. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for you. He shed his blood for you. Every Thursday we see salvation here. Every Thursday we see people receive Jesus and we are persuaded that this is of God. So wherever you are, I want to invite you to this grand welcome and come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you're there and you say, I've never received, but today I want that God. Come and receive him tonight as your Lord and Savior. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all I love. Come, come, come and receive Jesus. Come, come and receive Jesus. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Meaning of the everlasting I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Come. That's why I'm that's why I'm leaving. Safe and secure. That's why I'm leaving. Oh, that's why I'm leaving. In the everlasting earth, there will be everlasting. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. Oh, how bright the birth cross from day to day. That's why I'm here. 
That's why I'm in Safe and secure That's why I'm needed. That's why I'm needed. I want you to repeat these words after me. These are the best words you have ever said since you were born. Repeat these words after me. Say, Jesus, Son of the Living God, I believe. Tell him I believe that you died for me and you shed your blood for me. You are the son of God. Tonight, I believe with my heart, I confess with my mouth that you are Savior and Lord of my life. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.